Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm with Liberty Utilities. I'm the Community Water Resources Coordinator for Arizona for, te for Texas. I wanted to show you how you can make a water cycle model at home using things that you can find outside in your yard or around your house. With this, we can create a whole model that shows what the water cycle does in our Earth system. Everything from evaporation to condensation, precipitation, and we'll even be able to see how water can infiltrate and then percolate into our groundwater layers. So to be able to make a water cycle happen in a jar, you're going to need a jar, and then you're gonna need some different types of earth materials that we have in our natural system. So I have some rocks, I have some sand, and then I have some soil. So some other items that you're going to need, I'm going to use a bottle cap to go ahead and make a makeshift lake in our model. You're going to need a spray bottle with some water, and then you're going to need a piece of clean wrap to go ahead and use as your lid for the model. So what we're going to do is we're going to layer these materials how we may see them in the earth system. Okay, to make our model, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna layer the earth materials first. So I'm gonna put our rock in. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add some sand. And then I'm going to add our soil on top. So you can see that there are some different layers and that's how it looks in our earth as well. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottle cap that I mentioned earlier and this is going to act like a lake and I'm going to go ahead and just put that right in the soil layer. Kind of just stick it on in. There you go. So now I'm going to add some water into our model so that it can replicate what the water cycle looks like. So you're gonna take your spray bottle and you can go ahead and just spray right on the soil layer. Now I'm avoiding the lake for a reason. So just spray around the lake. And you want just enough water where you can see that it's starting to infiltrate the different layers and moving down through our earth materials. Okay, so now that I've added enough water into our model, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it with a piece of cling wrap. And so we wanna cover the lid entirely. And that's what our model will look like. Now that our model is assembled, I'm gonna go ahead and put this out in the sun for a few hours. The heat from the sun actually helps to move the water through the water cycle. So we wanna add some heat into our model so that we can actually see how the cycle is working. All right, so our model has been out in the sun for a few hours now. And so when you go to get your model from the sun, the first thing you may notice is that you have a lot of these water drops that have formed on the cling wrap that you have put on the lid. So you may be asking, why are there water drops in the cling wrap? I didn't put water there. So what happens is that we added water into our model. And then by having the energy, the heat from the sun that was heating the water, it started to move through the model. So what happened was this water that was in this top layer of soil, it evaporated up. And so when it evaporated, it ended up condensating onto the cling wrap. Now, when it condensates, it's gonna end up getting heavy enough, those water droplets, where it's going to precipitate back down in the form of rain for this model. And so one way that we can see that is that, remember how I told you to put the water around the lake but not in the actual lake itself, is that I can see that there is some water in the lake right now. And so with that, that means that it had to have precipitation. There was precipitation that went down and actually started to fill up our lake. Now some other things you might notice is that because it's had some time to settle, is that we actually have water that's starting to move through our different layers. 
And so that happens in our natural system as well, is we have water that can infiltrate our soil layer and start to move down because gravity is pulling it down. Then you can see that it's gone even further and it can start to percolate into the other ground layers. So we have it in our sand and all the way down in our rocks down here at the bottom. So that's how we have groundwater is that gravity can pull it all the way down. It'll infiltrate, uh, infiltrate the top layer and then it can percolate down into our groundwater system. So there you have it. You can create your very own water cycle in a jar at home. So if you end up making one of these at home with your family, please share with us a photo of what your water cycle model looks like. Thanks for watching.